All right, here we go, Jan. We got the point kicking off with Tejas Mahajan from India, serving first to Leander. Right out of the gate, he's forcing the hand of Tejas by drawing him in with a nice touch shot with an angle on it. As we spoke yesterday, Leander has a lot of weapons. It's not only driving, but it's soft hands and... Uh... I would actually say his best tool is his soft touch. He obviously has the ground strokes, that's no question, but he possesses the soft touch that some of these players that he plays does, do not have. Yeah. I would say he is a complex player, that's his the best thing. Yeah, diverse, complex, you could yeah. use all those words to describe him. Yeah. Now, Tejas Mahajan, Mahajan is a little different in his, his style of play. He's more in your face. He's gonna drive the ball, close the gap. He's gonna use his reach and his length and his athleticism to try to overpower you. So it's gonna be interesting what they try to do here. But again, we're seeing a pattern already developing. Yeah, twice already happening. Yeah. The slice forehand soft, drawing Tejas in versus letting him stay back and take the ball off the bounce and drive it. And we see Tejas reaching out two times and missing the point. Missing That's gonna be a factor. Four. Notice he's dropping the ball. He's not just content for driving the ball every time. Is this gonna, this is gonna be interesting to watch this play out because Leander is not just a bang, bang, bang type of player. The complexity of him is gonna create some problems for Tejas on the other side. I mean, there is a little resemblance how Leander plays more like um, pickleball players in America. Yeah, like a Ben Johns would play, kind of some, some exactly. touch and feel. Um, yeah. Obviously, not experienced at that level yet at pickleball, but you can see the, like you said, the resemblance of that. So, I like both styles, frankly. Of course, of course, yes. Oh, that's so good. Now, he's drawing him in, and where we're gonna see the adjustment from Teos is he's gonna start coming in a little sooner. He's not gonna just sit back and be caught every time like that. So if you watch this replay, Watch how he comes in, he closes the gap very nicely. Yeah. Well, he made the mistake already twice, so I think that the third time will never happen. <laughs> but uh, also the thing is that um, Tejas started to drop the, the third shot more, uh, which probably is a good way to... He's a very smart player. He's yeah. going to make his adjustments based on what Leander is doing. He can, he can do everything in the book as well. He's got all the shots in the, in the arsenal. Very focused, both of these guys very dialed in early on in game one. The serve was long. I think the score is 2-1 here, right? Uh, I believe it's 2-1, yes. Tejas to play under one. There's the touch again. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful by both players here. Nice lob reset. And, and, and that was enough to just get that point reset. Leander had taken control of it, pushed Tejas back. He throws that lob up. Now, we don't recommend lobbing all the time, but in singles, sometimes you can use that as a reset, as you saw. And lobbing indoors makes sense. There is no wind factor, nothing. So. Correct. M much different lobbing inside. Also, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, there's uh, on the roof, it's, it's covered, but you know, there's a, a light spot up there. Maybe it's affecting his ability to see it cleanly. Sometimes on occasion, throwing that lob up can just make them look up into something. And that may have been what happened there. So we'll see if he continues to, to lob at some point. There's the two-handed drive we saw yeah. last night that I was very impressed with. It's such a smooth he, shot. To my, my opinion, um, Leander needs to be more proactive. Uh, too much dinking will not uh, help him to win this game. You know, he has to mix up uh, the soft strokes and drives because uh, that's the only way how you can take out of balance Tejas, you know. Tejas can dink also 
quite a bit. Absolutely. Oh, that's great depth from Tejas. Again, the ability to get up to that line and use his length and his athleticism to dictate the point is going to be something that we're going to keep an eye on. Yeah. Tejas is up 3-2. Oh my goodness, what a shot. Now you can't train for that shot right there. There's no practicing that. A lot of touch, a lot of feel there. A lot of touch and feel. Two, three. I believe it's two, three is the score. Oh, that's, that is again, just so smooth. You know, you see a player hit a ball like that and, it, and you wonder, how come Teos couldn't put a, a paddle on that? It's just so smooth. That is what he needs to do, according to me. Um, you can dink, you can drop, but you need to drive because if you just own it, the, uh, dink, you know, Tejas is going to be there, so. Absolutely. So the score, I believe, is tied up 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, I think it's 3-3. Three, three. All right, a good rally there from Tejas Mahajan. That was a very nice uh, return, putting pressure on Tejas right away. We, we speak about that often. The big serve, the big return is going to set you up for success going forward in that point. You watch every single time somebody has a weaker return, they end up losing that point nine out of 10 times because they just don't set themselves up for success. Now, that short return was what Leander wanted. He just didn't execute. So there's yeah. a difference in the two things. It was a surprising shot, and I don't know if Tejas really wanted to do it, but maybe he wanted to surprise him, which obviously he kind of managed to surprise him. Oh, All right now. Leander's returns, especially on this backhand side, are just superb. Score is 3 0. Nice. That was good. That was good. That The call was, go, uh, was called out by the referee. All right, score is 4 3. Nice execution there from Tejas. Getting that ball, again, side to side, moving Leander around, making his job very difficult. If you can put a little stress on your opponent, making them hit a harder ball than they want to, you're going to have success in this game. Ooh, I like that. I like that shot from Tejas. It just clipped the net, but he'll come back to that shot. You watch. He yeah. loves that inside out circling yeah. around that backhand, and he opens up his paddle face and just rips that ball cross court. And, and he hides that stroke until the very moment, last moment. So beautiful passing shot on the underside. Just such a thing of beauty. I, I, I just wish I had that type of passing mm -hmm. shot. Well, you're a, you're a good commentator. <laughs> you know, if I had that shot, I wouldn't be commentating. I'd be playing in the finals against these guys. <laughs> I like to commentate on the great shots instead of actually Which hitting them. Which can happen on Saturday night. <laughs> it might. 5-3, Leander. Beautiful. Maybe it can be like pickleball osmosis, where if I watch it enough times and talk about it, then eventually I can just do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see the belief in your, in your eyes. <laughs> um, 
it's an option for sure. <laughs> <laughs> if it happens, I don't know. <laughs> so we have 6-3, Leander. Yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised at this score. Leander is a very tough competitor. Tejas knew that going in. I think he's seen a little bit of footage on him or at least watched him enough to know that he, he was not going to have a walkover uh, yeah. against Leander. Yeah, Leandro's composure, I think that like from him competing 20 years in tennis, he might have some kind of a knowledge like how to play the crucial points and uh, crucial matches. Absolutely, and, and I wanna say this as well. I've been around sports my whole life. You've been around sports your whole life. There are some people that just have a presence that you can't explain you you can't they just rise to these occasions exactly. and he's got that in his blood it's in his dna and i can see it right out i can see it from the start of seeing him play it's beautiful the and way how leander hits the balls out it's so smooth it's, so so effortless that's the only way to describe his game is smooth and effortless yeah. he makes it look easy and i watched this video clip the other day on YouTube and it, or on uh, one of the platforms and it said, when you see somebody make something look so easy, it's because they've spent hours and hours and hours perfecting that craft. So he's clearly spent a long, a long time, that. many years hitting those type of shots in tennis or in pickleball. It's beautiful being pickable so far, you know, obviously we, we, we don't want to side on one side. We, we want guys to, to bring the best of them on the court. Right now, though, it seems that Leander has an upper hand. And he, we clap to him because, not because he's Leander, but because he really plays well. Absolutely, and, and also Tejas walking into this match was the favorite on paper. So he walks in with a little bit of confidence saying, hey, I'm, the, I'm the, the, the best player on this court right now. But when he's down, we're gonna see what Tejas is made of. Exactly. Is he gonna rise up? Is he gonna show that he can make the right decisions in big moments, and, and maybe he loses game one. What is he gonna do game two? It's a clean slate, there so that's no, what we're gonna look for. Yeah, maybe we will not see that the game two because this is semifinals, there's only one game to 15. Oh, that's right, I was still stuck on the, uh, the, finals. the finals, I forgot. The, only the finals have the two out of three. You're correct, so he's gonna need to make these adjustments quicker than, Quick, than quicker, later. Quicker than later, yeah, exactly. That's a great point, Jan, <laughs> great reminder. Oh, I like it. I like it. I like Beautiful. what he did there. Now, did he execute? No, he missed that shot. But I like that he's thinking about going for that Ernie and, and dropping that touch in. And the truth is that, again, Leander, his drop was so good that uh, even though he was out of position and clearly in a defensive position, he could equalize the situation. And unfortunately for Tejas, Tejas missed it. Uh, that, that point but uh, it just shows uh, Leandro again like how much variety does he have yeah and I really wonder right now what's going on inside Tejas's head because he's supposed to be winning this game in his mind and he's down looks like 8-3 right now at the switch is this game over no no it's far from over and oftentimes as you know Jan sometimes the in switch will change things up. I don't know what it is about that. It's just something that happens. We see the momentum shift oftentimes. Um, almost a rejuvenation of the person that's down. And, and I don't think that Te Tejas is going anywhere. Yeah, I think if, uh, if Leander will reach uh, the 10 points or 11 points, uh, maybe within the next five minutes, it will be so much easier, but it could go either way. It could be eventually 8-6 instead of 10-3, and we will start from beginning. These momentum swings are a big factor in pickleball, especially in singles. Look at that touch. So he got what he wanted, he just missed. So if you are gonna get what you want, you've got to make sure to execute exactly. at this level. This was a, I don't know if you noticed that when, when Leander dropped the ball, he immediately rushed to the net because he knew the short ball was coming back to him. Absolutely. And this was, this one was a little too short, but. Well, I, I'm thinking that Tejas needs to get to his forehand. His backhand's actually his more deadly weapon, I feel. 
The forehand is smooth, but not going to hurt you that much. Also, you can tell he likes to roll his forehand cross court. So Tejas needs to pick up on some of these tendencies and try to manipulate that into getting the upper hand. So far, though, this game has been lopsided in favor of Leander, as I alluded to the fact that he might be able to take this match. Yep, 10-3. Ten, ten uh, I believe it might be 10-3 yep, ten, now. Yeah, 10-3. Yeah. He's asking for another ball. He's saying that that ball might be a little soft, which usually if he was winning, he probably wouldn't even mention that. So, you know. It's a game. Some of it's a gamesmanship. You know, but, but, but at the same time, I do see what he's saying. Sometimes those Franklins will get a little soft. If he felt like he hit that ball and it didn't go anywhere, he's going to, in his mind, justify that miss by saying, hey, maybe that ball is a little bit soft. Leander does not, by the way, just so everybody's clear on this, both parties have to agree that they can switch the ball if, there's not, if it's not broken. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. If it's broken, the ref smashes it, throws it away, gets a new one. If one of the opponents is just complaining about the ball, the other one has to know yeah. that he has the right to decline that right. that switch. And obviously, if he is winning, then he will not let it happen. It's, see, there's the ref saying. He's explaining it's not broken. You don't switch the ball out just because you're unhappy with the ball. Yeah. Because if both parties agree that there's a wobble or there's maybe a crack in it that could affect it, that's different. Yeah. If you've started playing with this, with this uh, ball and there's nothing physically wrong, you stay with that ball. Now, after the game's over, this game, um, you know, maybe you could make the case of like, hey, you know, I'd like to get a better ball in the beginning of the match or whatever, but you can't halfway through the match just decide you want a different ball. Yeah. It doesn't work that way. I think Leander is now very happy because he sees that Tejas is trying to, uh, to get anything which he can put his feet on. Yeah, and, and listen, I've been around pickleball for a long time. Absolutely, players do things to either distract some gamesmanship or whatever you, you want to call it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's all part of the, the game, and it's perfectly fine for him to ask for a new ball. What doesn't necessarily happen, though, is you get your way. Yeah. You don't always get what you want, and um, that's what we saw there as Leander said, no, no, the ball is fine, it's not broken, let's yeah. play on. And uh, credit also to go to IPF International, uh, sorry, uh, Indonesian Pickleball Federation, who are doing awesome job training their their the referees. I agree. You know, They've done the, really well. The the referee immediately said, oh, "It is not broken, so there's there's no question here." Absolutely, great job by the ref. All right, so call it what you will. A little bit of shift in momentum, and now Tejas is making a little bit of a run. Uh, Uh, he's, he's maybe talking about coaching. I'm not sure. He's asking about coaching between the points or something, maybe. He's struggling here. He's, try, he's, he's grabbing for straws. Yeah. When you play somebody really good, um, it can be a, a bit alarming to you when you're not winning and absolutely. you're used to winning. Absolutely, absolutely. And we've all been there, honestly. We've all been there. Somebody's beating you that you think shouldn't beat you, and uh, it gets a little interesting. You know what is, what is awesome, you know? Uh, there are so many good players in India and APO, everybody was shocked how, how what a good level of Indian players are. Now we are getting other nations playing pickleball. Yes. And if this will continue and tennis players will start coming to this sport, you know, even in Asia, there is there's no limits how, how far the level can go. Maybe I agree. Two or three years. I agree. And this sport is not going anywhere. It's uh, It's not a fad. It's not a a here today, gone tomorrow type of thing. Oh, that's a great passing shot from Tejas Mahajan. That's his bread and butter. You get that weak return, he can step into that forehand and roll it. You're not going to get a lot of those back. He's going to pass you every time. All right, 5'10", he's cut the lead in half. 6'10", so we're seeing that shift of momentum. And, and I, I alluded to the fact that sometimes that in change can, can mix things up and change things up for the opponents. Yeah. And a good timeout. So and they realized that he lost three points with him maybe two 100%. minutes. Yep. That, that's a smart player right there. You can be stubborn mm. and not win, or you can be a moldable, pliable person in the moment and realize, hey, you know what? 
I need to call a timeout for myself, get myself in order. This player has done three or four things right in a row, and momentum is changing. So, you know, I, I, feel, I feel as though the, the shift in momentum has happened slightly, and that's Leander's job or Tejas' job to recognize that and cut it off. Cut it off, yeah, yeah. So asking for the timeout, it, it could be considered as a showing your weakness, your mental status at that moment, but nevertheless, it's effective. So sometimes you, you show, hey, I'm, I'm struggling, but I'm using all tools which are available or legal for me <laughs> to throw you off, so. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I once saw at the uh, Pickleball Global uh, Challenge Cup, one of the players, I won't name any names, but you know, he was, he was tired and he was kicking the ball around a little and trying to stall tactic. And you know, it was evident that he was doing it, but he was trying to do it in a diplomatic way that didn't draw attention. But at the end of the day, we know, we know what's happening. You know, we know what's going on, but, but that's part of the gamesmanship. That's what I love about this sport. Yeah. You know, there's a lot, of, a lot more than just the physical part of this game. It's a nice overhead, but Tejas able to reset. But this is, the, this is the thing. He reset the first one, and he noticed Le Leander up at the net, and he's trying to hit a passing shot off balance. It's like, just keep resetting till you can get back stable and neutralize that attack. Exactly. The, the rally was uh, much longer than people would expect. It's, it's not happening for Tejas right now. Leander is, is what I call imposing his will on his opponent right now, and Tejas' mind is racing. He's saying, this is a game to 15. I'm down 11-6, you know. I like that effort there, but it didn't, it didn't happen. So now Tejas has a chance to, to make another run. Yep, yep. Uh, it, it looks like that Leander is, again, mixing up a little bit of strokes, you know, not only... All right, 7-11 is the score. Yeah, that's a nice shot. That, that one-handed passing shot from Tejas is kind of his bread and butter. He does it on the forehand side and the backhand side. He passes really well there. Leander doesn't need to commit so hard to that side. He's giving up a lot of an angle by, by doing that. Now, that, that's a case of trying to push a little too hard for something that just wasn't there. He needs to keep Tejas off balance. He should have probably rolled the ball deep over to the right side, um, but he got a little too fancy there. The Filipino uh, fan, fan club over there is getting a little louder. Now, isn't it interesting, earlier in the first half of this match, Tejas looked less confident, less aggressive. Now, he's getting closer. You see his confidence starting to rise. This is what we were referring to earlier. It's a nice shot from Tejas Mahajan. So this is the adversity that we talk about during the matches. Leander has to get rid of any type of hanging on to any calls or anything that's happened so far. He's got to just focus on going ahead. Tejas really turning up the heat right now. Great execution. Leander starting to lose some traction. He's got to regroup. But so far, Tejas in the second half of this game has really started to pick it up. Two bounces. Good job, though, from Tejas on the, on the hustle play, I would call it. Oh, yeah. 
I believe, I don't know if you saw what happened. I think, did Tejas call a timeout? No, he wanted to <clears throat> clear his face and the uh, referee didn't let him because he has, you have to follow your, the servant. Oh, that's right. The, you can't as the receiver. So yeah. then he used it. He burned a timeout. So basically, the referee said, if you want to have a timeout, get it. Ah, uh, okay. I he was. I don't think he planned on it. He just wanted to take a little more time. Well, and I think he was trying to get a little coaching over there too. So he needed yeah. to um, actually. Now that I think about that, really good job from the referee saying, no, no, you can't just stall that receiver can't yes. stall the server exactly. when the, it, it, in the rule book it states that the server dictates the pace of the the point of the game, of yeah. The game yeah. yeah and well, sa same for Tejas if Tejas is serving Leander can't just run over there and grab a towel when he's ready to serve exactly Leander getting a little tight here. You know, when you're up and you're winning 11-6, 12-6, it's easy to feel comfortable and confident. Once this game gets a little tighter, he feels Tejas clamping down and putting the pressure, and we're going to find out if he can rise to that occasion. Now, great, great manipulation of the ball there. He goes sideline to sideline, pushing Tejas around. It's what you have to do. That's a good leave right there. He recognized early on that forehand that it was up a little higher, and he lets that one go out. That could be dangerous, though, because sometimes Tejas' shots drop in, but I think he recognized it had enough pace. All right. Tejas appealing to the ref, but no can do. That ball returned out. What do we have, 13-11? Uh, no, I think it's 12-0, I guess. Oh, okay, 12-12. Yeah. I apologize. I looked at it upside down. It's 12-12. He's, he's asking the referee... Um, Tejas said something to him when he was going to retrieve that ball, and I don't think that it was anything illegal, but it did maybe possibly distract Leander um, in the moment that he was trying to get to the ball. But I didn't see anything that was egregious. You can see the distress in uh, Leander's face right now. He's, he's a little nervous right now at the moment because there's some big points coming up. That ball wide. I do like the shot there from Tejas. He's trying to hit that backhand passing shot again. Eleven thirteen. is that right? 12-13. 12, 13. 12, 13. Yes. 12 13. What a match we have every, here, folks. Every point now counts. Every ball is important. Uh, that's tough. That's tough. But you know what? That's part of the game. It easily could have rolled over the same way against Tejas. So. Both times. And it might end up still Leander could get one too. So. Score is 13-12 for Tejas. In favor of Tejas. And that's a big point right there. That missed return can be very costly. At 14-12, we now have a match point. I wonder if Leander has a timeout left. Maybe not. If he did, he needs to use it. Oh, that's so good. So good. He cut the angle off early enough in that forehand. He knew that he wanted to roll to the, to the cross court. Good uh, anticipation from Leander. I don't know about you, Jan, but I'm on the edge of my seat right now wanting to see the, the outcome of this match. It's very entertaining, for sure. Oh, this is what we live for in pickleball right here, these type of back-and-forth matches. Oh, 
what a passing shot from Leander. Smooth, smooth as butter. Ice in his veins, down two, rips a forehand cross-court winner. Unbelievable shot right there from Leander. We're going to see if Tejas has a response for that coming up right now at 13-14. Uh, he went for a, a bit much there. He went for a bit much. But that's, again, this is a pressure situation. And under pressure with Tejas closing that gap, basically crashing the tee, he felt like he needed to hit a really, really aggressive low shot. And it, it bit him in, in, in that scenario. Oh, he's rising to the occasion. Now, what did I tell you? And you agreed. He's the type of player that doesn't go away. He's going to rise to the occasion. These are the momentum swings that I absolutely love in pickleball. It's 13-14. He's got a big point right now on his paddle. Oh, that's really good execution from Leander as he sliced that ball just over the line. I, I think that Tejas going for that was maybe the right shot. But it wasn't there. It was too low for him to attack that ball. So from now on, we will have only match points because there's a, f a race to 15. Oh, so it's just a race to 15 in the semifinals. Yes. All right, so it's win by one. So, so this is a Le big, big Leander point. Leander has a match point. Let's. And there it is. Leander rips the two-hander down the line for the win. Great job from both guys. Wow, I cannot believe the finish that we had right there. Leander found himself in a predicament down 14-12. Fought off two game points from Tejas Mahajan. Battles, scratches, fights, and claws back to 14-14. And then rips a third shot, two-handed backhand for the winner. A clean winner, by the way. Not even close to the line to be controversial. And Tejas knew it right away. His shoulders sunk, his head dropped. He knew.